Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Earhart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, we'll be introducing Class 21 on Principal Component Analysis, the assignment for that. So I'm scrolling down to the uh, timeline, and this is the one. Okay, so I'm going to click on this HTML, open it up, and I'll introduce you to the assignment. All right, so we're going to use principal component analysis, PCA, to try to understand how the shapes of goblets relate to each other. And these goblets have six measurements. There's six measurements for width and two for height, uh, total width, uh, mouth width, stem width, and base width, as well as a stem width height and a total height. And I don't know if this is actually a goblet from Thailand, but it illustrates a goblet. Uh, this is what the data set looks like. It's got for each row, uh, it's got six variables with measurements. So first we're going to look at PCA on the original scale um, based on the correlation matrix. So we'll do that principal components and analysis and look at the result. The summary here gives you for each of the six components the standard deviation for each component the proportion of variance explained so in this case the first component explains 30, uh, 71 percent the second one explains 18 percent and so on where the cumulative proportion of variance adds up those components going uh, from left to right so 71 percent is the first one and the 89 percent is the sum of the first two The loadings are um, used to interpret the principal components. And they say, for each component, we're now looking at each of these columns. How, do, um, how, do the, how are the original features weighed or weighted in the component? How do they contribute to each component? So in this case, uh, the first component has um, those six numbers. I'm not going to give too much away for the answer. And um, I, I will say one more thing. This stuff down here, ignore it. The stuff under the loadings. The, the variance that we care about is, comes from the summary up here. Okay? All right. So our first uh, question is to br briefly describe uh, the evidence that indicates that the first principal components is interpreted as the variability in overall size of the goblets. And so that is interpreting this first component. Um, how can I help without giving the answer away completely? Um, I guess the main thing is to look at these loadings and think about if the, all of these loadings are positive, okay, and all fairly large, what happens if we increase one of the, one of the values here? So if mouth width increases, what has to happen for the rest of them as, well, I guess the way to think about it, I guess, is as component one increases, that means that each of these um, parts have to, are also increasing, okay? And if they're all increasing together, well, there you go. Bob's your uncle. All right, um, size adjusted measurements. So one issue about using those original variables is that we're a, a lot of the, well, the first component is really in, describes the size of the goblets, and maybe we're more interested in understanding uh, the relative shapes of them. For example, if I had a keychain um, of the World Cup trophy, it's it'd be tiny, maybe an inch and a half tall or something, relative to the real World Cup trophy, which is maybe two feet tall, or maybe they'd want it expressed in meters slightly bigger than half a meter tall. And those, if I had a perfect replica, those would have the same shape, right? The dimensions, the relative dimensions are all the same, but the total size obviously is very different. But I'm really interested in how, in the morphology and the shape. So in that, if I'm, if that's my interest, then one way to deal with this is to standardize each of the variables 
so that they are proportionate. So the way to do that is to take mouth width, for example, and divide that by the sum of all the measurements. And then I get mouth width scaled, S, which is a proportion. So the a proportion of, the, of all the six measurements contribute, that mouth width contributes to is this much. Okay, so maybe that's like 0.2. Maybe the total width is 0.25, and maybe the total height is 0.4 and whatever, right? And, and all of the, when, what do we know about all the proportions? They have to sum to one, okay? So keep that in mind for the very last questions. These proportions have to sum to one. <clears throat> all right, so here are the plotted scaled um, measurements. And the question now is um, to describe qualitatively what you see. Uh, what I'm looking for here is um, any uh, pairs of variables that are correlated. And you don't need to go uh, scatter plot by scatter plot and say this one's positively correlated, this one's negatively correlated. What I'm really looking for is sort of overall are these variables highly correlated or not? And you know uh, which pairs tend to be positive and negative? Okay, so can you understand generally how the dimensions of of goblets relate to each other in terms of positive and negative correlation and also are there very many variables that sort of stand out as outliers so just as an example this uh, plot in the bottom right we've got stem width and stem height and these uh, tend to be negatively correlated so as as the stem gets um, as the height gets longer the width gets shorter Okay, so you get either have a, a stocky, short stocky stem or you've got a long skinny stem, except for two weirdos out there. Okay, so that, that's sort of the description I'm looking for. I'm also not, I'm also hoping you don't go overboard and, and write, you don't need to write 15 sentences about this. Um, three or four sentences should be, should be sufficient. Give me a couple examples of what you see. All right, 1.3 interpreting principal components. So I've done PCA now on the standardized variables based from the correlation. Here are the proportion of variance explained for each component. Okay, once you've got the scaled ones, the first component explains half the variation. The second one explains just over a quarter and so on. The loadings is where we're going to spend all of our time on this uh, on this one. Okay? So we want to interpret each of these columns. And I've taken these coefficients, 0 0.47, 0 0.35, etc., and written them in equation form down here, 0 0.47, 0 0.36, etc. And I've also put the proportion of variance explained. So that 50.5 comes from 50.5, the proportion of variance. Okay. So I really probably should have given you one of these answers, but there's lots of examples of this in the lecture notes in this chapter. So this is sort of what I'm looking for. I'll uh, let me interpret one that is there a good one to just sort of throw away here. Let's do the uh, let's do this fifth one. Okay, so this fifth one explains 3.6% of the variation. Okay, it's a contrast between. So it, when I use the word contrast here, I'm looking to group all the positively signed loading coefficients and all the negatively, co negatively signed coefficients and compare the positive versus the negative. And I'll ignore any coefficients that are close to zero. So here I would say... Uh, Four, five. Sorry about that. I let myself get a little bit distracted. Okay. So the mouth width is close to zero. I'm going to ignore that one. Let's group all the positive ones. So we've got a total. Total height is positive. We have um, stem width and stem height. 
okay, so the total height and then qualities of the stem versus the total width and the base width. Okay, so I might group, group that and say something like, uh, it's a contrast between um, the total height and the size of the stem, right? The size of the stem incorporates both the width and the height versus we've got total height and the base, oh, sorry, total width and the base width. So um, versus the width of the goblet. Okay, so just to maybe just say that one more time for my own satisfaction. Um, we've got the total height and the stem width and height. So it's a contrast between the, t the height and the stem versus the width. That I'd be happy with, with that interpretation there. Okay. Um, determining what you can, what is a small coefficient to small enough to, you know, to consider zero is really relative to all the loadings. So I would say maybe point, point oh 0.06 is small enough, but maybe I would keep 0.16. Okay. All right, point, uh, 1.4, dimension reduction. All right, so I've uh, given the summary again of the PCA, and we're looking at, in this case, the cumulative proportion of variance explained, 0 0.5, 0 0.78, uh, 0 0.89, 0 0.96, 1. And then the last one actually explains zero variance. Remember that for the last question. Okay, the question here, how many principal components appear to be sufficient to explain most of the variation in size adjusted measurements? Discuss. So first you need to define for yourself what you consider to be most of the variation. Okay, so put yourself in the shoes of this archeologist who's digging up these goblets in Thailand. What would you consider to be most of the variance? Okay, so how much, how much of the total information do you want to explain? If you're happy with 80%, for example, then the first component gives you 50, the first two gives you 78. You might say that that's pretty close to 80%, and so you get almost 80% with the first two components. If you wanted as high as 90%, then you, uh, the first three give you nearly 90%. Okay. If you really want 100%, then you need them all. But that's, you sort of... Missing the point if you if you need to explain all the variation, we can get by with with half of half as many dimensions and explain ninety percent. That's pretty darn good. So define what you mean by most of the variation. Just choose a number that suit that suits you. I would say anywhere between seventy and ninety five would be a good range. And then for that amount, how many components do you need? And you can give yourself some wiggle room, like I just did, about eighty percent roughly 80%, roughly 90%. All right, visualizing the principal components. So I've taken the first three components that explain 89% of the variation, and I've plotted them in pairs. The first plot on the left is component one versus two, the second one is one versus three, the third is two versus three. And you have interpretations for these already that you wrote previously. What we wanna know is there anything interesting in these plots. So the first thing to do is just, you know, one thing that I notice is that there seems to be a cluster here in terms of components one and two. There's maybe another cluster up here. And then like two, 23, and 24 are sort of outside of those clusters. So there's something a little bit different about this. If I was an archaeologist, I might I might immediately want to say, well, what's going on with with 24? And Given your interpretation for component one and component two, you could probably characterize what 24 looks like relative to the others. All right? Is this like a, a tall, skinny glass with a, a really wide bottom? Or is this a, um, a short, squat glass, uh, maybe with a very narrow opening at the top? You know, there's something unusual about this, about this one. It's all, these two are also unusual in these other plots. Okay, That's sort of what I want you to describe. Um, you know, what, what groups together and what stands out is unusual. 
And you, you might also wonder, like, what would be interesting to know, right? If you were an archaeologist, are these all from the same site, the, the same site that you were digging in? Um, are these from different layers, right? As you dig down, you're going back in history, that sort of thing. All right, and the last one is um, if you've had a linear algebra class, you'll feel more comfortable with this class, with this question than if you haven't. But I think I think we can all sort of understand this this one. It tends to be a bit of a tricky question. Principal component six explains zero variability in Terabang. Okay, so one principal component has a sample variance of exactly zero. If we scroll up, we can see that right here. Proportion of variance for component six is zero. Why is that? To understand that, we need to go all the way back to when we created the size adjusted measurements and um, think about these values. Now, one thing that we discussed 10 minutes ago, it seems, is that these values are now proportional values, right? So the mouth width is is a proportion in, in these, all these scaled measurements are, are proportions and they sum to one. So this has to, this gets into degrees of freedom. Initially there were six degrees of freedom. The, um, as you, when you found a new goblet and you started taking measurements, the mouth width could be anything, the total width could be anything, etc. But once you convert them to proportions, there's some constraints. They can't be negative, they can't be greater than one, and the sum of them has to equal one. Which means that when you get down to the fifth value, right, mouth width, total width, total height, base width, stem width, if you know those five, you already know what the stem height proportion needs to be. Because if they all add up to one, you take one minus any five of them, and that is the value of the sixth one. So that actually, we have removed one degree of freedom. And so there's only really five dimensions that these proportions can live in. That geometric object is called a simplex. Um, I wrote my dissertation on it, basically. And uh, that is what's, that's what's happening. We are, by doing this transformation, we've gone from six dimensions down to five dimensions. And so we get a sixth dimension that, where there's no wiggle room. And so it, there's no variation. That is everything. Uh, sorry that took so long, but I think that will really help you get on with this assignment. All right, have fun.